Hello everyone, Stephen Clark here and friends, back with another news from all over Thailand and Southeast Asia. So what have we got today? Thailand, is it the land of smiles or the land of fugitives? A Russian man overstays in Thailand for just under eight years. Oops! Light them up boys, International Cannabis Conference coming next month in Bangkok. And Aussies travelling for medical tourism. A filthy condo left from an American tenant. Coconut water gang arrested for trafficking children in Phuket. The baby powder scare in Thailand. And Mekong power for sale in Thailand. But first up, a slightly used BMW Series 7 and a future forward MP accused of doing some shady business. Selling a car and playing with the mileage. Oh, look at this. An MP in Thailand selling his BMW Series 7 with 60,000 miles on the clock. Or is he? Or does it have 60,000 miles? A curious tale of a second-hand Series 7 BMW. Well, it's not the first time a dodgy second-hand dealer has wound back the clock on a second-hand car. Now is it? But this deal involved a future forward MP. Wow. Who is now trying to wind back the clock on a series of events involving him. A Swedish businessman has filed a complaint with the crime suppression police against Jarak Trion, a future forward party MP. The 34-year-old Swede, Kaspar Bartholdi, he had saw the MP's post offering a 2011 BMW Series 7 for sale with 60,000 miles on the clock. So he asked his Thai wife to contact the seller. He took the vehicle to an official BMW dealer in Chambry, where the dealer had discovered the vehicle had in actual fact done 400,000 miles on the odometer and not the 60,000 stated by the seller. After a final agreement on price of 1.45 million baht, the Swedish man headed home with his second-hand pride and joy BMW Series 7 with who knows how many miles on the clock. But unfortunately, the car broke down on the motorway. The pride and joy BMW had to be towed to a garage and over a period of short time cost the Swede 300,000 Thai baht in repair. So the Swede decided to contact the future forward MP. Mr. Jarak also allegedly told Mr. Bartholdi there was nothing he could do since he was a sitting MP. That's an astonishing statement. Mr. Bartholdi then took the matter to the Crime Suppression Division seeking justice. The same night, Mr. Jarrett made a statement saying that he was not involved in the deal. Astonishing statement number two. He claims that he was just a coordinator and close friend of the owner of the BMW and stated the Swede should sue the owner and not me. He also claimed that he was never witnessed nor was involved in this transfer of money. He also intended to file a complaint against the Swede for slander. Well, I don't know. I don't think that'd be a very good idea. The public might find out. Why is Thailand the land of smiles? Why is Thailand the land of fugitives? Why is there so many, or apparently so many, foreign gangsters in Thailand, living in Thailand? Thailand is the land of fugitives? Fugitives in Thailand are usually arrested through warrants from Interpol, also by social media, would you believe it or not? They put their heads on social media and they're, well, they're recognised, as did a German man wanting to help his wife do a barbecue, they decided to film it. Somebody recognised him and found that he was wanted by the German police and was hiding out in Thailand. 
While there are criminals in Thailand or left their criminal past behind, lying low in Thailand and behaving themselves, some do not. Many have decided to take advantage of Thailand's good nature and decided to pursue a life of crime like they did in their home countries. By putting Thai people at risk, bullying them and their rotten behaviour and their criminal activities. Thailand unfortunately has played host to financial con men, pedophiles, drug traffickers, even terrorists. Without the Thai government knowing, and believe you me, the Thai people and the Thai government do not want these type of people in Thailand. Some foreign gangs have taken Thailand to the limit and pursued their gang activities in Thailand as their base of operations. Gangs of foreigners have been involved in fraud, petty theft, burglary, in amongst other things as well. Nationals from Romania and Russia just recently caught a skimming money off credit cards. Latin American bank robbers, you name it, they head for Thailand. Unfortunately, they can enter Thailand and get a three month visa now. There's nothing to stop them from extending that three month visa forever. If they wish, there's not much that can be done about it if they laid low and behave themselves. Usually these criminals participate in finding officials that are corrupt or will take a bribe. And soon a marriage of convenience is held between the two separate parties. I am not saying that all Thai officials are corrupt. There are just a few bad apples, but that goes for any country worldwide. Maybe immigration should be stricter with the entrance requirements of aliens entering Thailand. These criminals entering Thailand using fake IDs and a court should be arrested immediately and turned over to Interpol. There should be mandatory jail sentences for foreigners using fake passports and fake IDs. No amount of money should be allowed to bribe any official or protect gang members or criminals from the law. Thailand is a wonderful country. It's the land of smiles, it really is. And these criminals should never be allowed to enter Thailand and try to ruin it. A Russian man has been arrested for overstaying his visa slightly by just under eight years. Yes, a Russian man has been arrested for overstaying his visa by 2,861 days or seven years and nine months. The man was arrested on Koh Samui. For those of you not familiar with Koh Samui, it is an island off the coast of Thailand a very popular holiday destination for tourists. Immigration and tourist police were doing a spot inspection on the island. When checking the man's visa, they had noticed that his visa had expired in 2012. The man was identified as a Russian national, 32-year-old Alexei Safranov. The man was handed over to the Kosamui police for prosecution, where he will likely end up being fined, deported and blacklisted. The blacklisting for such an overstay would be around 10 years before he can return to the kingdom. The 32-year-old would have been around 25 at a time, entering Thailand in the Malay border on January the 12th, 2012. At the time, he was given a tourist visa stamp and allowed to stay 30 days, but he decided to extend his stay by just under 8 years. Johnny's IM reporting. International Cannabis Conference is coming this month. With the marijuana business in Thailand potential worth up to 661 million US dollars. A consulting firm is billing itself as a leader in the knowledge of the Thai industry. The company has a fund to foster entrepreneurs and joint venturers to the legal marijuana industry in Thailand and abroad. So maybe pop on down to Bangkok and see what kind of bang you can get for your buck or maybe it'll all go up and smoke. John here. Johnny Siam reporting. Australians choose medical tourism in Thailand. More than 15,000 Aussies travel to Thailand each year for procedures 
There are numerous Thai doctors whose client base are approximately 90% Australian. With price, surgical quality and post recuperation a large factor, Aussies are spending over 300 million US dollars a year in Thailand on a variety of treatments. With hospital locations and 60 accredited hospitals with accessibility from Australia directly to Bangkok, Phuket and Koh Samui. Why not get more bang for your buck and while you're uh, recuperating, what's wrong with a lovely beach or something of that nature to help you recover? Johnny out. Hi there, Mark reporting for Footbike Thailand. Here's the story of a couple of dirty dogs. A landlord has taken to Facebook to warn others about a foreigner and his Thai girlfriend who rented a condo in Bangkok. The post include photos and a video showing the disgusting mess of rubbish of plastic bags and clothes all strewn around the condo. She described the toilet and the kitchen as filthy. She alleged in the post that a couple had disappeared leaving the electricity bill of 4,000 baht unpaid. The US man was named along with the nickname of his Thai girlfriend. She wanted to make it loud and clear to others to be careful before renting to the couple in the future. The couple had been renting the, the property for five months. The woman announced she had already reported the matter to the police. They had filed a report but would not take action, saying that it was a matter for a civil court to deal with. This is Mark reporting for Talkback Thailand. Child slavery has risen its ugly head again. First we had little girls selling flowers, now we've got children selling coconut water. Phuket's Patong police have announced the arrest of the coconut water gang. There was four suspects. The gang has been accused of trafficking children by forcing them to roam the streets of Patong selling coconut water. It is believed the children were forced to do this job. If they refused, they were beaten. All four suspects have been charged with human trafficking. The gang forced the children to roam around selling coconut water from 7 a.m. to 1 p.m. and from 1.30 p.m. to 6 p.m. Let's just hope it all gets sorted out. Johnny Siam reporting. The FDA reassures over asbestos in baby powder. The Thai Food and Drug Administration on Tuesday assured customers no traces of asbestos have been found in any baby powder, saying the FDA became screening in 2009. Assurance came after the US FDA on Friday warned customers to stop using Johnson's baby powder from product lot 22318RB after the regulators found traces of asbestos in a bottle purchased online. Johnson & Johnson recalled 33,000 bottles in the US. The Thai FDA are testing locally produced product. Johnny out. Johnny Siam reporting. New Miet Kong. Dam in Lao opens. The first hydropower dam on the lower Mekong started power generation in Lao this week. Protests from the Thai villagers say Sunbury Dam and several others will destroy their livelihoods. The 1.285 megawatt dam debut can sell with parts of the Mekong drying to a trickle. Electricity from this hydro generator will be sold to Thailand at a rate of 2 baht per unit. Hmm, interesting that. Johnny out.